I am Pastor Connie and I am so honored and I am so blessed to be here and to just give you what God has put on my heart. I pray that at the end of this uh, teaching, you will feel more encouraged. You will also feel that God is speaking to you. So as we start, I would like us to start with a short prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We are so grateful, mighty God, that we can come to you openly as your children. We are so grateful above all for the gift of salvation. Lord, I invite your spirit to come and speak through me. Come and speak to us. Come and encourage us. Come and empower us, oh God. Come and bring hope to anyone who is watching me, who has lost hope, mighty Father. Come and bring life to those who feel at this particular time that they need life in their spirit. I pray and ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we all say amen and amen. Today I just feel a specific word that I feel to share. And this is something that is not very new. I believe it's something that you have heard before. But I pray that the Lord will give you revelation. The word that I feel to talk about today is prophesy son of of man. Now, this is something that we find in Ezekiel chapter 37 when God was speaking to the prophet Ezekiel and demonstrating to him what he should do and tell to the house of Israel. Now, when you read uh, Ezekiel, and I would like to encourage you to find time and read it. Ezekiel chapter 37, we can see here God calling out Ezekiel, prophet Ezekiel, and saying to him, prophesy, son of man. And I just feel God is calling us out to prophesy. Now, you might over expound this, you might make it big, but I want to just say to you, God wants you to speak his word. God wants you to speak prophecy. God wants you to speak his word in every situation that is happening right now in our nation, in the nations of the world, in your family, in your life. God wants you to prophesy, son of man. He wants you to speak not the situation in front of you or not your own words, but he wants you to speak his word into that situation. Now, when I read Genesis and I was just looking at how God is really calling us out in this season to come out as the church and the body of Christ and bring life to every situation around us and start bringing life to marriages and start bringing life to our nation, start bringing life into the lives of children. They might not be only your own children, but to speak life in the youth, to speak life in the women and men that God has created to start speaking life into every situation at this particular season. I also feel as I was preparing for this message that God is saying it is a season of restoration and I want to speak that over anyone who is going to be watching me and I want to say to you God is restoring. He needs you to speak, speak into those areas that the enemy has stolen. Now, when God says restoration, it means restoration comes because something has been stolen. Something has been taken out of your life. The enemy has taken something, you know, and when God says restoration or the word restoration means he wants to restore and bring that back, which has been stolen from your life. Now, when I was preparing for this message today and this teaching, I felt the Holy Spirit say that it is a season of restoration. Now, if you are watching me, I want to speak over your life restoration. Remember, son of man prophesy. As I am speaking restoration over your life, I would like you with your own lips to prophesy in areas 
of your life that you believe need restoration. I want you to also speak. It might not be your life right now, but someone that you know around you. And I want you to speak, son of man, prophesy. Speak into the life of that person in the spiritual atmosphere. Speak over your community things that you see that the enemy is stealing. Speak over marriages. Speak over the nations. Speak over our nation and the nation where you are to right now and you see there are areas that need to be spoken into the word of God. Father I want to speak in the name of Jesus over anyone right now watching me that Father as you have spoken to me and said it is a season and the grace of restoration upon the church and the body of Christ. I want to speak to any child of God who is watching me and I declare restoration right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Lord with speak restoration in the finances of your children restoration in the marriage of your children restoration in relationships we speak restoration over their children of oh God that sons will be restored to their daughters sons will be restored to their fathers fathers will be restored to their sons and daughters daughters and sons will be restored to their mothers. Mighty Lord, we declare restoration in relationships between parents and children. As I'm speaking this, I also see someone who is watching me that you are believing God for your relationship and I see it is a mother. You are believing God for your relationship with your son to be restored. Your son is not in the same country as you and the enemy has brought in a bit of confusion and the enemy has brought in this unity in your relationship that as I speak this, I, I hear the Lord say, I am God who restores. I speak that relationship to be restored in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak the anointing of God to go and touch the heart of your son that God through his spirit will touch Turn the heart of your son back to you as the mom. I pray that also God will not just restore, but God will bring healing in your relationship right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, every lies that the enemy has brought, every deception that the enemy has brought to disunite your relationship between you and your son right now, we break it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and we declare right now that relationship restored in the mighty name of Jesus. We also declare right now that as God is healing, that God also removes every resentment that is in your heart towards your son in the mighty name of Jesus, that God gives you a spirit to forgive that and I want to speak this to you and I know you are watching me God is asking you to forgive your son I don't know how deep your son has hurt you but I believe as a child of God forgive but I also hear God saying forgive your son forgive him we remove every spirit of resentment every resentment that you feel towards him we remove it that division that the enemy has brought will remove it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mighty Lord, we declare restoration. As I see someone and people who lost their business, you lost your business and I don't know why, but I feel it was during COVID. <clears throat> it was during COVID and I see that you believe in God, that he can do a work that no man can do. We declare right now that business to be restored. We declare your finances supernaturally to be restored in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Someone here is also believing God for their marriage. They are believing God to restore the love in their marriage. I declare right now restoration in your marriage in the mighty name of Jesus, that God restores the love, the trust back into your marriage. And that is done not only in your marriage, but that God restores your family, love and trust in your family right now in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I also feel to speak restoration into someone who is watching me. You lost your job. And when you lost your job, what happened at the workplace and that, that made you lose your job was something that the enemy set up. It was 
false evidence that was given against you and i declare right now and i speak in the mighty name of jesus that god is going to reveal the truth in the mighty name of jesus god is not just going to restore the position and the job that you had god is actually going to take you to a better position higher than the one you were at and the people that did this to you i know you know them as i'm speaking right now you know them i want to ask you to forgive them release them and forgive them and this is the doing of god right now god is the one that is going to restore you god is the one that is going to promote you and lift you high and god right now is doing the work of restoration i declare right now in the mighty name of jesus that you are restored in your position in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ we declare we speak and we pray now son of man god said to ezekiel prophesy son of man i want to encourage you that let this be a daily lifestyle where you understand the authority and the power that God has given you. Now, let me show you what God showed in Genesis. This is how much authority and power God gave to man in the beginning when you read the book of Genesis. Now, when you read Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, it says, And God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, male and female created he them. Verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply. Fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fall of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. This is how much authority God entrusted man. In the beginning, when you read, when God was speaking to the first man, Adam, he gave them so much authority. And this is the authority that God carries and has given us to man. And the Bible makes it very clear. He made us from his own image. Now, when you continue and you read Genesis chapter 2, verse 19, look at what the Bible says. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fall of the air, brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Now it goes on. Whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was its name. God did not only give us authority, but he also gave us a mouth that has so much authority, that carries so much authority. God entrusts Adam to name. And whatever he called anything, the Bible says, that was its name. So in other words, man has been given so much power with the mouth or with your words to create. We can see this replicated in the beginning through Adam in Genesis chapter 2, Adam is given so much power by God to create. And I'm not saying he created these things, but with his words, God gave him to speak. And remember again, we are made from the image of God. When you read the whole of Genesis now, I wanted to bring it in when you read Genesis Chapter 1, when you read chapter 1, the whole of chapter 1, you can see chapter 1 from verse 3 to verse 31. You can see God speaking everything in creation. He spoke and it was. He spoke and it was. He spoke and it was. If God Almighty needed to speak, the Bible would have said God thought and things were. But there is so much power. In word, when we speak, 
And I want to say this because remember, we are created from the image of God. God spoke and it was. And because we are created from the image of God, we also have so much power in our speaking. Genesis chapter 14 and verses 15. The Lord said unto Moses, Why do you cry unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Now look at the power our words carry. God did not just say to Moses, Call unto me. Pray. God, as the children of Israel were calling out and saying, the Egyptians are at hand. We are going to die. They are going to kill us. God shows Moses something very profound here. God says to Moses, why do you cry unto me? God says to Moses, speak. And this is what I want to say to you, child of God. Speak. Why are you crying to God? Speak with your mouth. Prophesy into being it shall be. And God reminded Moses to speak because that is how much authority and power God has given to our words. And today I want to encourage you and also remind you that that mouth, that mouth that we have, the words that come out of our lips are so powerful. Now, these words are so powerful that so many scriptures in the word of God, I will not even finish all of them, talk about the power of our words. Now, if you can read what happened when Moses spoke, believe me, we can see in that chapter what happens in the end, that now, eventually, the children of Israel cross from where their enemies were, they cross over the Red Sea to the other side. And all God was reminding Moses to do is Moses speak. Child of God, speak the word of God. Speak life, speak the word of God. That is how much power and authority that we have been given as human beings and you as a child of God who carries the spirit of God in you, I want to say to you, you have the words of life. So I want to quickly finish by talking about what our words carry. Now remember, our words are powerful and we can choose to give life or death through our words. That is how much authority and power our words carry. God has given us power and authority through our words, just like I've talked about Moses. Now, number one, our words can bring life or death. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21, popular. It's a very popular one. But I also believe that we quote these scriptures. But I don't know if we understand the deep revelation and meaning behind these scriptures. Now it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. The Bible does not say death and life are in the power of the word of God or are in the power of, I don't know, your actions. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So what does that mean and what does this say? It says that our tongue brings forth fruit. Whether we use it to bring both fruit of life or we use it to bring both um, fruits of death, our tongue carries that much fruit it can bring that much fruit and today i want to encourage you to bring fruit of life and not death upon your life and upon whatever situation is before you and upon whoever you stand before to speak most importantly as a child of god let us bring life as fruit 
as this is so important to our Father. We can see here that the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 4, uh, the valley of dry bones. The Bible says, again he said unto me, prophesy to these bones, say unto them, O you dry bones, hear the word of God. Children of God, God is saying to us, prophesy. As children of God, we need to prophesy life. Now, we can see Ezekiel here had a choice. Here, when we read Ezekiel, God calls him son of man. Now, we can sleep on son of man. Just the word son of man has so much revelation behind it. God is recognizing Ezekiel as a son of man. A son of man who is created and has the spirit of God, but is also 100% human. And God is trying to say to Ezekiel here, you are a son of man. But look beyond the physical circumstances. Look beyond the physical that you see right now. Because you know what? God took Ezekiel around a valley of dry bones. And Ezekiel says, and the bones were very dry. And Ezekiel says also when you read that scripture, please take time and read Ezekiel chapter 37. Read the, all of it. Ezekiel also said that he took him around about god made sure that ezekiel looks at these dry bones and god asked ezekiel can this son of man can these bones live again and ezekiel could not have a pure answer literally ezekiel says you god you god you know some bibles translate it differently Ezekiel at that particular time could not say yes or no. In other words, Ezekiel was trying to say to God, I don't know. But you know, you know. And God says to Ezekiel in verse 37, Son of man. He says here, again he said unto me, prophesy to these bones. Say unto them, all you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now I want to ask us something. Couldn't God in his mighty power have just said to Ezekiel, watch Ezekiel, I am just going to speak to these bones and these bones are going to become, you know, they're going to live again. No, God demonstrates to Ezekiel that if you can use my word, my word, which is life giving, these bones can live again. And what does the Bible say? Speak the word of God. God does not say to Ezekiel, speak your word of doubt. Because God saw from the beginning when Ezekiel said, God, you know. God says to Ezekiel, prophesy the word of God. Now I want to encourage you today. You have a choice to either speak the word of God, to either be quiet and not even to say anything, or to actually speak death. Ezekiel had a choice to not speak life. But I love it that he spoke the word of God to these dry bones. And if you can read Ezekiel chapter 37, you will see the end result. These very dry bones ended up being a mighty army. And this came as a result of Ezekiel speaking life into these bonds. Now I want to ask you, what is it around you that is dry? What is it around you that looks like dry bones? Is it a relationship? Is it our nation right now? Because God has not given up on our nation. God is counting on us to speak life in our nation. God is counting on us to speak life into the lives of the youth that we see around without a dream, without a goal, you know, living a hopeless life. God is counting on us to speak life. These bones were very dry. And I believe God is saying to us, 
the church, the children of God, to awaken. To awaken and not mop and cry like everyone around us. But that whatever situation right now is in front of us, that we speak life so that he can restore. That we speak life so that he can revive. That we speak life so that he can heal. That we speak life so that he can, you know what I mean, bring every situation back to life. Our God is ever. And he is asking us to speak his word. Not to look at that situation and analyze it and overanalyze it and say, you know what, this marriage is dead. God is saying, have you spoken life? Because after speaking life, keep speaking life. Don't speak life today. And then after you have spoken life, the next morning you are saying, oh, there is nothing good here. Because that is your tongue. You have so much power. You can speak death or you can speak life. So today choose to speak the word of God. Because the word of God has power. The Bible says, from the abundancy of the heart, a man speaks. You will speak from the overflow of your heart. So fill your heart with the word of God. It is that powerful. Fill your heart with his word. Do not stop filling yourself up with the word of God. In everything you see around you, ask yourself, what does, that, what does God say about this? Speak the word of God and you will see life giving in every situation that we see around us. If you are watching me and you have given up and you have lost every hope, I want right now to speak life in your spirit. And I want to say to you, arise and, and shine, child of God. Arise right now and shine in the name of Jesus. Arise and speak the word of God. Because the word of God brings life and the word of God recreates. The word of God restores. The word of God is hope and life and hope. So speak the word of God. Fill yourself with the word of God. We will, lastly, I want to say, you and I will be judged by our words. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 to 37 says, and this is what God is saying. This is how serious God has given us authority and power over words. We can prophesy using our lips and we can speak life or we can choose to speak death. That is how much power God has left before us. But I want to say to you and I want to caution you. We are going to be judged by our words before God. Matthew chapter 12 verse 36 to 37. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account. There are of in the day of judgment. For by your words you shall be justified. And by your words you shall be condemned. So be watchful and careful of the words that come out of your lips. Because these words are words that are going to go before God and will be judged by these words. That is why it's very important to, for us to watch, be watchful with what we say. I want to finish by saying to you, God has so much mercy. That is the best thing ever. You can go before him and ask him to forgive you for the words that you have spoken over your life. You know that most of the situations that are before us, most, not all, are because of the words we have spoken. In our marriage, the words we have spoken over our children and because the Bible says life and death lies in the power of the tongue. I create what comes. And man, it manifests through what I have said in the spiritual realm. I want to encourage us to be cautious with the words we speak, but also to speak hope and life. Father, we thank you and we pray, Lord, revive us, renew us, wash us, and help us to tame our tongues. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. I pray and I hope you have been encouraged by this word. And I pray that God will empower you to start again, to speak life. Let us speak life 
in every situation around us. In the spiritual realm, it will manifest in the physical realm. Maybe you haven't seen it yet in the physical realm. Do not stop. It is building in the spiritual realm. And you are yet to see it manifest. God bless you.